Good afternoon, everyone. It is David Schlotthauer here in the Weather Center, keeping an eye on your weather forecast for March 25th, 2023. In this video, this is going to be just a general update on the weather pattern across the United States as Pretty much the craziness does continue now as this weather system moves across the rest of the Great Lakes into the Northeast with more weather systems to come. Now, if you're new and you really like these videos, please consider hitting the red subscribe button, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So here's a current look at the water vapor imagery from tropicaltidbits.com and it really paints a picture on these weather systems as they move across the United States. The main one that has caused a lot of problems yesterday with the Rolling Fork Tornado, Amory Tornado in Mississippi, now is all the way into the Great Lakes. This big swirling motion, really an indication that there's really strong winds and a dynamic system with some dry air getting fed into the system with a lot of moisture down here as an atmospheric river of moisture continues to stream northeastward across the southeast into the mid-Atlantic coast. We got another weather system that is continuing to impact the Pacific Northwest into California, bringing much cooler and drier conditions finally but the colder air and the stormier weather will return by early next week. More on that in just a second. And then there's a little weather system here that is going to be launching into the northern plains, bringing a chance of more snow. Now, taking a look at those current weather alerts as of right now, and we can see there is a lot going on at this given time. We have winter storm warnings across northern Michigan. We have high wind warnings and wind advisories with strong winds that are moving across the upper Great Lakes and also across the upper Midwest into the Northeast. We have red flag warnings over western Texas, including from New Mexico and south uh, western and southeastern portion there of Colorado. Not only that, there is winter weather advisories and winter storm warnings over southern Montana and northwestern Wyoming. And yes, that little piece of energy is going to be bringing a little bit of snowfall across the southern half there of Nebraska into central Iowa with winter weather advisories there. And then, of course, California is getting braced for another powerful wet winter storm along to go with more heavy rainfall and strong winds by early next week where winter storm watches have already been posted with frost advisories hard freeze warnings you don't typically see that this time of the year all, all the way across the west so now taking a look at our real-time mesoanalysis or rtma data for short we can see that much warmer temperatures do remain across the deep south here with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s to lower 80s across Mississippi, Alabama, and southern Texas, including for Florida, that is striving close to 90 degrees. But that doesn't apply the same rules when you go further north, where temperatures are still pretty chilly, with temperatures in the 20s this time of the year for the Dakotas, for Montana, for Wyoming. If you're in Idaho, Nevada, really cool temperatures, thanks to that cooler air that remains in place, including for the Northeast where temperatures are still in the 30s and 40s at this hour. So when we put this into motion on the European model, you will see that weather system really developing in the next few hours across, again, the northern uh, high plains here over Nebraska, over portions of Kansas and Iowa. This is going to be a very weak system, nothing too expansive about it. Going to just bring a little bit of snow briefly over the Nebraska into Iowa region, and then that's going to really fall apart. And then showers and thunderstorms will continue across the deep south as we go into Sunday and Monday. Some of this could bring the threat for large hail, strong winds, and tornadoes. Yet again, not a severe weather outbreak by any means, but definitely some severe weather for the deep south and the southeast. There is going to be some quiet weather on Monday, which is good news across much of the U.S. We all need a, a, a reprieve of the exception here if you are in the Northeast, where a little bit of snow and rainfall is still possible there for Monday, March 27th in the evening hours. But guess what? The calm weather is going to end. We have another big system hitting the West Coast by Tuesday morning. According to the European model, this looks to be a pretty strong system, bringing strong winds, heavy rainfall that will cause 
significant flood concerns, mudslides, debris flows, more heavy snowfall for the higher elevations. I mean, we cannot get a break, folks. We are just getting hit with storms after storm after storm. We only get a few days here and there of dry weather, and then it's just back to the wet weather yet again. This system is strong, so we will keep you updated if you are in California on that. We also have severe weather concerns if you are in the deep south here, like Louisiana. If you are in Alabama, Mississippi, and Georgia, there is going to be some strong thunderstorms that are anticipated. So let's go forward in time here, especially for, um, say, Tuesday afternoon. Heavy rain and snowfall is anticipated over the Central Valley and California by the 84-hour mark. Very strong surface low um, right off the coast of California. We will have to watch that one for strong winds, of course, for the Bay Area. That's through Wednesday afternoon. It is not until we get into maybe Thursday when the weather pattern looks to dry out with maybe a few remaining showers for the higher elevations for California. And then that system moves into the northern uh, portion of the U.S. with more snow, heavy rainfall for the south, and a well-defined warm sector that we will have to keep an eye on for the concerning threat of severe weather, especially for Oklahoma and Texas. In fact, if we go back, we do have some pop-up storms potentially by the day six and seven time frame. We will be looking at the SPC here in just a little bit in regards to that. Severe weather possibly for Tennessee and the southeast again with a renewed risk of tornadoes, damaging winds, and heavy rainfall, of course, with that. With another system headed for California yet again, I mean, it's just storm after storm. We don't, again, we get few breaks in between, and that's about it. And then more active weather potentially for Northern California, including for the Pacific Northwest, to end this forecast period. So as far as rainfall goes, you are looking, or for California standards, there could be quite a bit of rain here. Anywhere between two to four inches of rainfall for the northern portion of California, some of the highest peaks could get four plus inches of rainfall. Some of the Sierra foothills here, anywhere between one to maybe three inches of rainfall. Some of the coastal ranges here, maybe as much as two to four inches of rain. And then for the deep south here, more significant rainfall, potentially three to five inches is certainly a possibility through the next five days. Some modest amounts of rainfall and QPF amounts for the Northeast and also for the Great Lakes with anywhere between about a half an inch to about an inch. How much snowfall can the Sierras get? The higher elevations, possibly three to five feet of snowfall above three to 4,000 feet and possibly up to uh, six plus feet of snow in the highest peaks above 10,000 feet. And of course, if you are in the Northern Great Lakes here, maybe a foot of snow is expected as that weather system continues to transient across the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes and the southeastern portion of Canada with more snowfall for the mountains here. But for the lower elevations, less than four inches are anticipated. Now that we talked about um, the, the active weather pattern, let's talk about severe weather. There is a level three out of five, again, for the deep south. This includes for Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and southern Alabama. This is a really big situation and concerning one because uh, Rolling Fork, uh, Avery, uh, it's just been really bad for them. Lots of devastation. People are killed because of the tornadoes. I just pray and all my thoughts go out to all those people, the victims involved with that um, intense supercell that we tracked last night. That thing was absolutely violent. I have not seen anything like that since December 10th in uh, Mayfield in Kentucky of last year. So uh, I, just, I just hope everyone is okay because it's been a rough one. And it looks like it's going to be a rough one for day two. This is for Sunday into Monday with a level three out of five on the severity weather index scale all the way from central Louisiana into central southern Mississippi and central and southern Alabama all the way into the Carolinas and Georgia. This is driven by a 5% chance of tornadoes. It does not surprise me if they go a 10% risk for tornadoes in southern Mississippi and even for southwestern Alabama for tomorrow. But for right now, there is a 5% risk for tornadoes 
for the Southeast. Tomorrow, I might not be able to go live, but I will work something out. Maybe for an hour or so, I will be able to do something. So as far as large hail goes, there is a 30 sig for large hail. That means uh, there could be hailstones two to three inches in diameter. So again, enough to really cause injuries, some property damage, tree damage, um, window damage, that sort of thing. So some really large hail potentially in the deep south here of Mississippi and Alabama. Topping that off with a 15% non-sig for strong winds. So it's going to be driven mainly by large hail with that enhanced risk for the deep south. So now, as you all know, like we mentioned, there is a day six slight risk for severe weather for central and southern Kansas, central Oklahoma, central and northern Texas, because of the severe weather that uh, we could be looking at. And this is a high plains event. So what does that mean? There could be some large hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes, of course, because of the dry line that could influence this. And when we have a dry line, we get a lot more discrete activity. And that could usually mean uh, some tornadoes. All right. So now, as far as the Climate Prediction Center goes... I mean, we have not had a truthful spring. Literally, it is very cold here right now, still in the upper 50s here. For late March, it feels like January and February. I don't even believe it's March because it's just been so cold here. So likely below average temperatures will continue across the West, including for the Pacific Northwest and the Northern Plains through the next 10 days and well above average chances of temperatures here for the deep south and the southeast, 70s, 80s, and even 90s, even some upper 90s in some locations. Yeah, that's very warm for this time of the year. Still eating below average um, for the northwest, for the west coast of California there, including for the northern plains and the northeast, but still above average there through the 14-day period. As far as your precipitation outlook goes, leaning above average and likely above for California and the northern portion there of the U.S., including for the northwest, southeastern U.S., looking to see leaning above and likely above average chances of precipitation, and then leaning below average if you are in Texas and New Mexico through the 6 to 10 day period. And really no areas here of looking at below average. It's going to be equal chances to leaning above for the 8 to 14 day forecast. And again, there you are, California, still in the green. So leaning above average chances, though, all the way through the 8th of April. I mean, it's been over a month since we had a really dry period here. And we really need a break. But it looks like we're not going to get one anytime soon for the southeast leaning above average. All right, quickly to end this, I wanted to show you all the temperature outlook really quickly. I am not going to spend a whole lot of time on this because um, I'm tired, of course, but other, you know, you get the idea. Still tired from yesterday. That was a stressful stream, uh, to say the least. 10 hours of active weather. So going forward here, we can see uh, that temperatures will be below average all the way through the next three to four days here. As we can see, still below average across California. The pattern is not changing. Still 5 to 15 degrees below normal through the next 5 to 10 days across the West. More shots of cold air for the Great Lakes, but these are just going to get replaced by warmer temperatures again. As you can see there, it's not the consistent cold air that you typically would like to see and still below average across much of the west here there's not many days that we have with temperatures above average all right now before i do in this i do want to promote myself that's my job here as you all know if you guys are new to the channel and you really like the detailed weather content the live coverage especially on yesterday's severe weather event actually if you guys want to check that out just go to the live stream tab here on the channel and click on my latest video it's from 15 hours ago so if you guys want to check that out um, that's me tracking the Rolling Fork tornado in Mississippi. That thing was devastating. Otherwise, if you want to just watch my videos, they're all listed there on the channel. Be sure to check that out and subscribe if you're new and share this with your family and friends on social media. 
Not only that, if you all are new and you like uh, my Discord server, there will be a link in the description below this video if you all want to participate in that. Sorry if I have not been active in there. I will be active tonight, so make sure you stay tuned for that uh, because you guys are really awesome and I love you with all my dear heart because you guys make everything possible here for the work that I do. All right, one last um, promotion here is if you guys want to participate in the Mesovort WX weather website, all you need to do is um, be sure you do um, click um, the Inter Mesovort, create a free account today. And once you have created your account, you'll be able to leave comments, like the posts that we all have in there. This is sponsored by Evan James, okay? Evan James is really awesome. And the website is really great. Uh, okay, so yeah, um, if you um, join, you are able to actually view that. So, and uh, like it, and also leave comments. Um, no comments on other people's posts yet, but as we grow this website, it will get a lot more better. All right, so yeah, um, if you guys are new, uh, share, like, and subscribe, and that really helps out a lot. All right, that's going to do it. Thank you all for watching, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with more weather content.